In this video, we will go over the answer and explanation to the coding exercise. At a high level, here are the steps I'm thinking of to solve the problem. Since the question has strings that correspond to different number values, this could be a really good spot to use a map, mapping the Roman numeral string to its corresponding integer value. We'll use a vector to store substrings that we find in the input string s. Each time we find a substring, we will push it onto the vector. After we've broken the string into its substring Roman numerals, we'll iterate over our list of substrings and add their values to the total, using the string to int map we made at the start. We'll return the total at the bottom of the function. Inside of the Roman to int function, let's create an int variable named total, initialized to a value of zero. Then we will declare a vector of strings named strings. After that, we will have a map with keys as strings and values as ints, named symbol to values. We are going to populate this map with the string values of the Roman numerals as keys and their corresponding integer values. Let's add the following key value pairs, mapping the string i to the int 1, v to 5, x to 10, l to 50, c to 100, d to 500, m to 1000, iv to 4, ix to 9, xl to 40, xc to 90, cd to 400, and cm to 900. Next, we are going to have a for loop that starts at int i equals 0, runs while i is less than s dot length, and increments i by 1 each time. Inside of this for loop, we will check if the substring at index i is equal to the Roman numeral character i. If that is the case, then this Roman numeral could be one of three values within the larger number. It could be iv, a value of 4, ix, a value of 9, or i, a value of 1. So before we assume that it has a value of 1, we are going to need to check the next character in the string. First, let's check that i plus 1 is less than s dot length, meaning that it does not exceed the length of the string. Then we will use the and operator, and also check if s at index i plus 1 is equal to the Roman numeral character v. If so, we will add the string iv to our string's vector using the pushback function. Since we have accounted for two characters in the string, we need to increment i by one. This will move the iterator for the for loop one spot to account for the i. And then the for loop does the i++, moving it past the v character, and then we are on the next character in the string. Else if i plus one is less than s dot length, and s at index i plus 1 is equal to the character x, we will add the string ix to our string's vector, and then increment our iterator variable i using the plus plus operator. Else we will add an i to our string's vector, because if it didn't have a v or an x in front of it, then we know that it is a single i that corresponds to a value of 1. In an else if statement, we will check if the character at index i in the string is x. If it is, we will check if i plus 1 is less than s dot length, and s at index i plus 1 is equal to l. If so, we will add the string xl to our string's vector, and then increment i. Else if i plus 1 is less than s dot length, and s at index i plus 1 is equal to c, we will add the string xc to our string's vector, and then increment i by a value of 1. Else we will add the string x to our string's vector. Else, if s at index i is equal to c, we will check if that character after it is a d. If so, we will add the string cd to our string's vector, and then increment i by 1. Else, if the character after the c is m, we will push the string cm onto our string's vector, and then increment i. Else, we will add c to our string's vector. We will have an else statement to the outer if, else if, else if statement that we wrote. Inside of here, we will create a string, named char as string, and use the string constructor to convert s at index i to a string of length 1. Then we will add char as string onto our string's vector. Outside of the conditional logic, we will iterate over each string, which we will call Roman, in our string's vector. We will add the corresponding int value to the total, using the map of the symbols to values we created earlier. At the bottom of the function, we will return total. On line 36, we need to make sure the character D has single quotes around it, not double quotes, so that we don't get an error when running the code. When we run the code to test our solution, notice that it is correct. <laughs> 